Hello students, welcome to module seven. This week, I'm gonna talk quickly about Proverbs and the Song of Songs. So we are still in wisdom literature. Um, I wanna mainly drill down on Proverbs today. Uh, we are going to start with Dr. Hearson's notes and I'll add a little bit to it along the way. So starting with um, the first page of his notes, really instructional, Wisdom is what I would call Proverbs. Um, the proverbs, they, they kind of function as a community sort of treasure trove of wisdom um, that has close parallels with in Egyptian instructional wisdom. Um, <clears throat> proverbs of Amenhotep, Amenhotep, I believe is his name. Um, they closely parallel um, what we have in Proverbs, uh, which should not be surprising. We, we talk about Proverbs being composed mainly by Solomon uh, as a collection of wisdom. And so um, you'll see places in Proverbs that talk about, you know, these are the Proverbs of someone else. And so um, it is divinely inspired wisdom, which is arranged to fit into uh, the expected genre form of of Proverbs, a book of Proverbs. So this particular book contrasts two ways of living life. That's the main idea here in Proverbs, two ways. Fools who practice the way of folly, they reject God and the covenant, and the wise. So you're either foolish or you're wise. And the wise are those who carefully maintain their relationship with God and adhere to his ways. They try to live according to God's ways. So the book contains seven collections of Proverbs, um, as Bullock points out, uh, and Hearson describes here. The prologue indicates the book's purpose with uh, focus on the young, and this is pretty common in um, ancient Near Eastern proverb books. Uh, they focus on instruction of the young. Um, so moving on, uh, section E the instruction is based on reverence of God and worship of God. Uh, the fear of the Lord is that's really what that means is reverence and, and, and worship and honor of, of the Lord. Uh, that's the first controlling principle of wisdom. Uh, so it's the beginning of knowledge, right? It's the beginning of understanding. Um, thus knowledge offered in the book is a relationship with the covenant. God is dependent on his self revelation. Um, so that's kind of the starting point of uh, where you see the division between the fool and the wise is that the wise person has an understanding of the fear of the Lord. Okay. Uh, so having talked about that, let's talk more about authorship, um, which is in section M. Let's scroll down. M, authorship. I want to make sure I say what he has here before I say anything else. The book contains several references to Solomon's role in the proverb traditions of Israel, such as uh, 10.1 and 25.1. The opening verse associates the entire work, the book, with Solomon. So scripturally speaking, Solomon is the author. Okay. Solomon stood at the fountainhead of Israel's wisdom tradition, and we see that in 1 Kings 4, 29 through 34. Uh, the formal structure of the book supports an early first millennium, think time of Solomon, date for its composition. Um, then uh, other wisdom teachers had their material attached to, to Solomon's work since he was the impetus, the beginning point of Israel's wisdom tradition. So again, this is the idea that Solomon has collected and written and um, arranged the book in large part, um, and that other things may have been added to the end, uh, or Solomon added them to the end. Okay, so that is the idea of authorship here. Uh, probably during the time of Solomon. Okay. Uh, if you think about that, that would be 900s BC. 
describing the theological themes um, in the Old Testament, we don't get a real window into how people educated their children. Uh, but Proverbs gives us a content a, a window into the content of that education. It uh, it presents itself as the wisdom needed for successful living. Um, again, that's living in relationship with God and His created world. Um, up until the Enlightenment, um, people tended to not comp compartmentalize their life. Uh, there was there was the world of experience and uh, rational perceptions and religion were not really di differentiated. You didn't like bracket out and say, this is religious talk. This is science. This is um, social science. You know, you didn't have that. Uh, so experiences of God, Yahweh, were experiences of the world. And there was no attempt to separate faith from a worldview. The Lord, the fear of the Lord, was the beginning of wisdom. And so knowledge here is primarily propositional, uh, relational, I'm sorry, and not propositional. Knowledge is usually relational here. Uh, there's much more to knowledge than learning um, content of things. It's, it's applying things in relationship. So the brightest people in the world can acquire amazing insight about the world, or maybe even about God, they would have propositional content type knowledge and still not know him. Wisdom, on the other hand, is rooted in relationship with and personal knowledge of God. And so there's a difference between having, in, having a factual content sort of knowledge and having wisdom. This is a relational knowledge that has an impact on our relationships with God and with others. Um, and so the book of Proverbs emphasizes the retribution principle through the two ways of life that one can choose. Again, it comes down to, are you going to be a fool and reject God, reject his ways, or will you choose to be wise, seek understanding, um, try and live life in harmony with God and with those around you? And so with that, I want to end um, and I'll see you next week.